I am so excited about this story. Sylvia Ruger is National Accounts Manager for Brooks Canada, sponsors of Kids Fest running and reading clubs across Canada, producers of The Pathway, uh, let me give you the whole title, The Pathway of Hope. These shoes are actually called Pathway. And we talked about these on the program before with uh, Brian, uh, Brian Warren, and we're gonna hear how these have been doing. But I want to hear the story of this Olympian. This is another jacket, Sylvia, that was part of your, your gear. And this all began right here in Ontario with a teenager watched black and white TV? That's right, yes. Tell us. Uh, well, I was uh, running a little bit um, when I was young, uh, but didn't have any goals with it, no real dream. Uh, but all of that changed in 1976. The Olympics that year were in Montreal. And because it was on Canadian soil, a lot of TV coverage, a lot of footage of Canadian athletes, I watched it on a little black and white TV set at home. And um, I was so inspired by the level of excellence. And I started to ask myself some questions while I was watching that. Could I one day, if I made that my dream and my goal to be an Olympian, could I one day run for Canada at the Olympic Games? And uh, so it seemed like a pretty audacious dream to have. Um, but I wanted to, to, to make that uh, a dream for myself. And so I went up into my room after the Games were over, found a little piece of full scap lying around. And I wrote the date on it, September 11th, 1976. And on the note, I wrote that one day I would run for Canada at the Olympic Games. And um, I didn't want to tell anyone about that dream or goal because I think sometimes when our dream is so big, we think if we share it, people will think that's crazy. You're crazy. But if we also don't achieve it, then we'll have to explain to people why we didn't. So I didn't want to share it, but I wanted to keep it as a commitment to myself. So I grew up in an old farmhouse. And uh, when Newtonville? Yeah, just Newton. outside of Newtonville, Ontario, Ontario. Yeah. and uh, we had wooden floorboards in our home and in my bedroom uh, there were spaces between the floorboards. So I took the note and I folded it up and I hid it in the floor and uh, you could still see it and so I wanted to really hide it. So I got masking tape and put the masking tape over it, co colored the masking tape grey, the same colour as match my floor. The floor. Yeah, and then pulled my carpet over top of it and it stayed there and I, I never shared that dream with anyone but from that day on I knew that there it was that was my dream my goal and I needed to uh, pursue it so that that began the Olympic journey I I'm gonna stop right here and just 20 years later you went back your dad's still living in the house he was still living there at the time yeah. and uh, ripped up was the masking tape still over it uh, it was still in the same place oh. the, floor, the note was still in the same place I mean yeah. you have to love this treasure Look at the note the 15-year-old Sylvia wrote, September 11, 1976. My goal, to make it to the 1980 Olympics in Moscow and win for Canada. So it was a two-part dream, to represent Canada, but also to win a medal. Absolutely. And this was there, intact. Yes. And uh, we're jumping to the dream come true, at least part of the dream come true. That's right. This is what you wore when you yes. ran when? And where? Well, eight years um, after I wrote that note, I did have the honor and privilege of running for Canada in Los Angeles um, in the women's marathon. And um, 1984 was the first year that uh, women were able to run the marathon at the Olympic Games. So it was, uh, it was a privilege to be there as a Canadian, but also to take part in that historic event. And um, so it was a dream come true. It was an eight year journey when I wrote that note said Moscow, I thought it would take me four years. Didn't take me four years, but I always like to say delay doesn't mean denial. Just mm -hmm. because the dream doesn't happen when we think it should happen doesn't mean it isn't going to happen. So I, I made it to the Olympic Games, uh, ran for Canada. I was the second youngest in the field and uh, finished eighth. And uh, How old were you? I was 23 at the time. 23? We have a picture of you. That's right, yeah. In the moment, is yeah. this crossing the finish line? That's uh, the final lap of the track coming into the Olympic Stadium, and I have one lap uh, left to go. Wow, so much work. Yeah, it was uh, uh, probably the, the beauty of writing uh, a dream when, you're, when, when I was young like that is I, I didn't even question whether I had the talent to do it, and I didn't think about whether I had the ability or even the work, but it was an eight-year journey, but it was um, 
very significant journey. And um, getting but to in the, the moment, Sylvia, yeah. you were gripped with fear and uncertainty. Yeah. Well, yeah, I remember two nights before the Olympic uh, race, uh, I was sitting outside the um, dorm. The Athletes Village was the University of Southern California, and I had just hung up the phone, pay phone, saying goodbye to my family for the last time before my race in two days. And I was suddenly overcome with incredible fear. Um, all the doubts came in. Sylvia, you're not good enough to be here. I'd, I'd only done one marathon before the Olympic trials, and I knew I would be in a race with women who were seasoned veterans, Olympic champions and other events, women I had read about. So you're not good enough to be here. What if I don't get my water? You know, water tables in the Olympics are very strategic and it was hot in Los Angeles and they kept warning about the dehydration factor. What if I disappoint my country, you know? I'm one of three women, you know, representing a nation. Incredible privilege, but incredible responsibility to run well for Canada. Um, but I think the biggest fear is always, what if I disappoint myself? Because personally, we know more than anyone the sacrifices we've made as we've worked towards those dreams and goals and the price that we've paid and how much personally it will mean to us. And um, I was gripped with so much fear at that time that I knew that if I didn't get perspective somehow, I would never make it to the starting line. Now, the interesting thing is this dream of running in the Olympics was birthed very soon after you made a very important spiritual decision. Yes. Well, when I was a, a young, uh, a young uh, child, I went to church often with my family. My mom took us, and um, I heard about God's love, and I heard about Jesus dying um, on the cross to, to bring us back into relationship with God. A lot of that uh, went over my head. I was a very strong-willed child, very stubborn. Um, wanted to, to do things my own way, get things my own way. Uh, but the truth of, of uh, the word that I heard during those years uh, gripped me one night. I was actually 14 at the time and uh, uh, was uh, sort of uh, trying to get things that I wanted um, and willing to trample over people and do it in a way, whatever it took to get my way. And I remember one night just being gripped with how different the way I was living my life was from what God intended from all those years that I heard the truth. And I remember a scripture that came to my mind that night was uh, Romans uh, uh, 5, 8. It says, but God demonstrates his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And I remember that night giving my, my life, uh, uh, turning my life over to Jesus Christ and inviting him into my life to become my friend and my redeemer, my savior. Mm -hmm. And um, so that uh, dramatically uh, you know, changed my life, but it was shortly after that that the dream was birthed. And um, I, I love, uh, I read once that God plants dreams. And if we're willing to wait long enough and work hard enough, our dream will live. And I really believe that dream was birthed. It was not my dream, it was a dream uh, that God gave me uh, to pursue. As we will see, running has framed your life in ways you could not have expected. But in that moment of terrible fear, as you're about to represent Canada, you had God to turn to. I did, yes. And how did he meet <clears throat> you? 